Thanks for your company. This morning, we are having a conversation on managing rivalry in music. A day to celebrate music and the art in Ghana became what many have called a day of national shame and international embarrassment. Rival reggae and dancehall artists Stoneboy and Shatawale are currently in police custody over a brawl Saturday night at the 20th edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. That's the VGMAs. Now, camps of the two rival artists clashed on stage while Stone Boy was about to give a speech after winning the coveted Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year at the Music Awards. The brawl started when Shatawale, known as Charles Niyama Mensah, walked up to stage with his multitude of fans while Stone Boy was about to give a speech for the award. The program, which was live in about 40 countries via DSTV and streamed live on Facebook via many portals, ground to a halt due to the disturbances. The show resumed after about 30 minutes, but it wasn't the same. Many patrons left, some musicians failed to perform, including Diana Hamilton, who picked up gospel artists of the year prior to the brawl, never mounted the stage. Perhaps the sigh of the Vodafone boss at the end of the program while presenting the Artists of the Decade Award sums up the general feeling about the event meant to celebrate 20 years of the Music Awards. Here's Vodafone Ghana's official statement on the matter. Now it says, we refer to the unfortunate incident that occurred during this year's edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, VGMA on May 19, 2019, will wish to state as follows. The scaffold on stage during the VGMA is regrettable. However, we acknowledge that a large number of players in the industry do not subscribe to such conduct. Vodafone, as a responsible organization, is against all acts of violence and such conduct, no matter the circumstances. We will support any review process of the incident to ensure that our commitment to recognize and celebrate achievement and success in the music industry is not compromised. For now, our passion for music and the industry remains solid. We look forward to an exciting future for the industry. Now, organizers of the event, Chatterhouse, and I must say I'm glad to have your CEO in the studio with me, will be having a discussion shortly. But they have released a statement on this incident. Well, in that, in that statement, they apologize to stakeholders and uh, talk about the fact that they have terms and conditions that uh, our Ds will have to, uh, to move by. We'll bring you details of that statement. But Stone Boy has also released a statement. But here you have it. It's for immediate release uh, by Charterhouse. And the management of Charterhouse Productions wishes to apologize unreservedly on its behalf and on behalf of the board of the 2019 Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, the patrons and millions of, of viewers. So um, they, they cite some dignitaries, government officials, um, partners who were present from MTV Bay's uh, CEO of Mogo Awards in the UK, and they apologize to all these persons, um, international visitors. And then also in the, in the, in the last part, they also apologize uh, to all Ghanaians, really. Let's have this conversation now with the CEO of Charterhouse. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Theresa Ayode uh, is joining us in studio. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, um, you. I, I can imagine you're quite disappointed. This is 20 years, and you've been doing this for a very long time. This was supposed to be a mega celebration. Definitely. It was, it was um, definitely planned to be a mega celebration. We had um, been planning since last year and we had put in place a lot of um, measures and activities to celebrate, make it a grand celebration. And the main awards night was actually the grand climax of various activities that we had run as part of the festival. Mm. So there was a huge anticipation of what the event was going to be like. We had a new venue installed purposely for the event because we anticipated that the passion and excitement to attend the event would be so high that the current venue options we had um, we're not going to be able to contain. Mm. So we had to invest in the new venue to just broaden the experience, um, the live event experience, of course, knowing that there was also going to be a larger international viewing um, experience as well from our partnership with DSTV and um, through social media networks as well. So a grand spe um, spectacular event was designed, and I'm sure if you got to the venue, you would know that this was an event that had mm. Um, taking a lot of um, painstaking efforts to put together 
And so the team was all prepped. We've been working 24 hours for two weeks to get this, um, the production of the event off the ground. Of course, this is um, preceded by so many hours spent in planning and meetings and all of that. So it was very well thought through, very well designed. All the security plottings and arrangements and measures had been put in place. And so we were quite um, taken off guard with this new development as it um, occurred. Mm. I, for one, was sitting in front, was in the front row, and I saw, and the initial, the original briefing for the security around the stage was to limit the number of um, fans, as artists, supporters who I would normally saw that run on stage. On so, TV. So there were some restrictions. Yes, so there was a restriction on the number of fans who would want to go, get on stage. So that was, the security was engaged in doing that. And so when that had been cleared and the artist was now about to do the presentation, all attention focused on the artist to do his presentation. Okay. And then this, well, this group appeared from the back right straight, and, made, and were making a beeline straight onto stage. And at that point, the security tried to re re regroup because normally when they clear the stage, they move to the side so that they're not, I mean, like, you know what? Is that because it's for there. TV? It's for TV. You're not supposed okay. to be in front of the stage all through the program, mm. so to speak. But when the artist is announced on stage and is going on, they provide the protection to protect the stage. And so when that is underway, they move back to the side. So the second wave of people who then showed up mm. on stage, you know, kind of took everybody by surprise. So they had to regroup mm. in front of the stage and try to protect yeah, the two factions from the fact the main aim was to protect the two factions from meeting. Mm. All right. Clashing, yeah. All right, Mom, you've spoken about the, the new venue you got mm -hmm. for the event, and mm -hmm. I've seen a, a couple of commendations on that. Amayal Debra, for you. instance, says it was a nice venue, the mm -hmm. air conditioning was good mm -hmm. uh, compared to the previous venue. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of air conditioning mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. there. But many have also questioned how it is possible for an artist and a group of his supporters to have arms at a venue like this. Was there any screening? There was some screening done, but obviously what um, showed um, us is that there was a clear breach mm -hmm. in the arrangements that were made. And um, these, were, these are things that we'll need to um, review and put more stringent measures in place, working closely with security authorities. Mm -hmm. yeah. I must say I've got one love, uh, the Kubolo, he joined in the conversation via Skype. He's well-traveled and uh, he'll be sharing his thoughts uh, to us on what happened. And he wasn't at the event though, but uh, he's a well-respected musician here uh, by some in Ghana and uh, in other parts of the world. We'll come to him shortly. Uh, one love. This yes. incident has gained worldwide traction. People have spoken to us from different parts of the continent. In fact, um, a well-respected dancehall artist spoke to Hits FM from Jamaica, and he says, look, we don't even do this here, the home of dancehall. What's your mm -hmm. reaction to what happened uh, at the VGMAs? First, I want to greet you guys. Hope you guys are doing fine. You don't get I'm speaking to you from Paris. Um, I watched it on YouTube because some of my friends are part, took part in the event, so I was watching to see what was going on. Um, I was playing basketball yesterday and I put up a picture and somebody from America said, you are shooting basketball whilst another artist is shooting whatever. Like, because, so as you are saying, it has reached far. What I feel happened, as I slightly know these artists, is that Shata was going to congratulate Stonewall, but it wasn't the right time. And it was misconstrued by both security personnel of Shata and Stoneboy, what was going on. And usually, you know, when you take on a certain kind of persona from music and so on, and you have security guards that don't have action going on around them. Sometimes the security guards themselves, I'm not talking of the Chatterhouse security, I'm talking of the security of the artists themselves. Sometimes they create situations to make themselves look valuable. Mm. One when, love, sorry, I have yeah. to interrupt here. Sorry, um, you're not the only one who has the notion that Shatawale was on his way to congratulate Stone Boy. Yeah. Many I've seen on social media said, oh, we actually thought same, but after seeing his tweet, I don't know if you've seen that tweet about no, a lion and smelling blood. 
and many who were at the at the event say he was throwing chairs around does that appear to you to be the disposition or posture of somebody who is on his way to congratulate a rival in the industry well well i was not aware of this information and if this has ha happened before he approached the stage then i guess he wasn't going there with good intentions but then that would be so surprising to me to make such a reckless move and also to comment i think it was very betraying of stone boy's security to put an arm be it a real one or not in his hands instead of them doing their job if they felt their artist was in danger they who had the guns on them whether the guns were real or not should be the ones to take any action and not put the gun in the hand of the artist this makes it feel like it's a movie or they think it's some kind of game or i don't know but it's a very strange maneuver for your security to put a weapon in your hand instead of them handling mm. you know one of so. there's a lot more to discuss you are well traveled and um and i'm sure you you have seen what um, it is like to to have healthy rivalry in the music industry would we'll, i'll come back to you to talk about how we can capitalize on that instead of seeing what we saw over the weekend is really degenerated we'll talk about how to use it for the good of the industry but let me come back to the studio i've still got the ceo of charter house here with me so in your statement you mentioned that you're still collaborating with the police yes. uh, but we had one of the police officers um acp kwesifori say the police was not involved in the preparation uh, um of this particular event can you tell us your side of the story how was the police involved and well, to what we, extent well we would normally write an official letter to them to request for um, security for this particular event we're doing. So um, in terms of them um, being aware, they were aware that we were doing an event and that we had requested for some police security. Mm. And that is why we had police on location. Mm. Uh, we because we, had, we don't have the authority to um, command to get police on location on, on, at, at the event grounds without going through a channel and a process, which we did. Mm. So that's to the best of my ability what we did. That's why there was some police security on, pre on, on at, at the events. And I think they did a real yeoman's job in restoring calm and order to the, um, the situation. And that is how we were able to get the miscreants out of the way and get the show to continue mm. to, its, to its purposeful end. So, so that really is what happened. Um, maybe um, a probably an in-depth the conversation, you know, about you see, um, Stoneboy was saying that he was receiving threats and all that. That did not. That was not brought to our notice okay. as organizers. Okay. So if that had been formally presented to us as an, I'm feeling insecure or I'm feeling um, threatened. I mean, because I'm facing threats, I need you to provide extra security or be cognizant of this situation so you can prepare. Then we would have made th those adequate measures and had that kind of briefing session with mm. the police that, okay, this is what we need from you, but this is a, a threat that we need to look at. Okay. But we didn't, we were not mm. aware of um, some of these things, except what we see in social media all the time as in the, the so-called beef. Okay. Yeah, but if um, Stoneboy felt that threatened, he did not make it um, known no, to us too. as the organizers, but we would have made, put in extra measures to ensure that um, that threat was nullified, mm. but we were not made aware. So maybe that's what he means by the police were not aware of um, some of these things, oh, which right. we were also um, caught on the blind side. Mm. Yeah, but in terms of general um, information, as in there's an event happening, this is the event happening, and we work with them, this is the 20th year of doing this event. So um, it's, it's a process we follow all the time. Mm. But um, this was, I think, uh, that's why we said clearly there was a, a breach. Mm. It was a well, security breach. Mm. Yeah. Well, Stoneboy has since apologized. In fact, he did apologize at that event when he picked up another award. And he also sent an official statement to communicate his uh, regret. Now, I'd like to extend my sincerest apologies and deepest regrets for the part my conduct played at what should have been the biggest celebration of Ghanaian music last night. In seeking to entertain Ghanaians, I have been the victim of incessant vilification and physical attacks in recent times. My own dear wife has in the past suffered a knife attack. 
at a concert, an attack that had been meant for me, which resulted in her being rushed to the hospital. This, for me, has been quite alarming with regards to my security. Such unfortunate incidents have clearly had an impact on the sense of alertness of my entire team and I. Violence can easily result in trauma, especially violence against those closest to us. Stone Boy is a very respectful and well-mannered musician, highly spoken of amongst his equals and the masses, both locally and internationally, due to the high level of respect I show to all and the high level of com comportment coupled with hard work. I have been going through difficult times despite the gains my team and I have made musically and in Raisin Heights, the flag of Ghana and also at the 20th Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. I, however, accept that no matter the provocation, there must be an attempt to remain calm. I am taking remedial measures to ensure that there will never be a repetition of such actions. These include improving the security measures within my team. These immediate actions are to ensure that such acts do not recur, nor in any way affect my person or my profession. So Stone Boy there uh, apologizing and says, it's my ardent hope that the show will be remembered for the showcase and appreciation of talents and not the few minutes of regretful haywire. I will continue working with Charterhouse and hope this won't in any way affect my relationship with them. To all Ghanaians, let us come together in unity and rise above fueling needless rivalries, I urge all fans to keep calm and desist from all forms of violence. To Vodafone Ghana, my sincerest apologies to you for bringing your brand to a low moment like this. As artists, okay. we appreciate that you invest and continue to invest in our talent. We hope you will continue to support Ghanaian music. The stone boy, you know, always comes in peace, and I'll always advocate for peace. So we continue our conversation. I've just been joined by Richmond Edupoku, Head of Membership and Business at Musica here with me in the studio. We'll be talking about uh, what we've seen so far within uh, the industry and how we can stem what is appearing to be more of gangsterism. One love, the Kubalo is still on Skype, but let me come to you shortly, uh, Madame Ayawade. Stone Boy has apologized and says he hopes this will not affect his relationship with you. Uh, would you want to respond to that now? Well, um, we are, it's good to show that, I mean, he has actually taken time to put together a press statement, which means that he does care about his publics, and that's commendable. But um, the event also has terms and conditions for participation, which the artists sign up to. Mm. And one of them is um, clauses about against violence and strong language and things like that. So. Um, as a board, we will still have to reconvene and review these actions in line with the terms and conditions that we've laid out and then come up with whatever um, actions thereafter. Mm. So it's mm. something that we'll have to still re revisit. But, but we, we are also interested not just in condemnation of the act, but also in encouraging um, more of peace and unity in the industry. Let's work together, let's collaborate to to lift each other and to move higher. So it's, it's also the right gesture in that direction. Speaking of terms and conditions, until recently, uh, Shatawale had been suspended yes. from your event. He just yes. came back. This yes. is his um, year of comeback, Come if I may want yes. to put it. In yes. hindsight, do you regret lifting that? Uh, you may want to call it ban on him? Uh, I think that we have very, we've been very magnanimous uh, with Shatawale's um, behavior. Um, towards us. We've always given him a chance to, to um, reinvent himself and to represent himself to us and um, some of these attempts have been thrown back in our faces and so it got to a point where we took a stand and then we, stu we stood by that stance for about two years just for the peace of uh, mind and for you know to just maintain our grip with regards to the event and so um, after that we, he, his team made overtures to us and actually this year, I made a personal effort to reach out to him and to engage a lot of these artists on a one-on-one -on -one to explain to them what we were doing and what this event meant to the industry and where we were taking this event even internationally. So it's beyond a Ghana activity. So just always think bigger 
when you think of the industry and where it can get you to. And I met, I met with him. I had a one-on-one -on -one dinner with him. And his demeanor was totally different. He sounded very um, apologetic about his past behavior and promised to collaborate with us in and, and all ways. And in truth to that, we actually worked with him on the nominees jam in Kumasi. He was there. Stone Boy was there. They all performed. And there was no issue. We did the same at the Independence Square for the VGMA experience. Stoneboy performed, he performed, and there was no issue. Mm. So we thought, okay, we are, we're getting there, we're getting there. Mm. And so this, actually, this incident actually took us completely by surprise. Mm. I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me come to Richmond uh, Edupoku. He is head of membership at Musica. Has Musica at any point in time called these two gentlemen to have a conversation with them? Are they members of Musica at all? Um, Shatawale is a member of Musica. And in the past, the union has um, spoken to the parties, not together, separately. I remember one time going to his house with the president, for instance, to talk about some of the things that had happened. We have also released several statements in the past condemning uh, various acts between, um, um, between them. So yes, we have made efforts at reaching them, at talking to them, and at settling their differences. Mm. And why not have them together? Uh, anything stopping you from from speaking to these gentlemen, you know, bringing them together in the same space and seeing how you can deal with this. Because this has, for many people, really degenerated. It really isn't um, a big problem if two people cannot um, 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 go along. However, when their personal differences begin to affect other people in the public, then it is a problem. Professionally, we have spoken with them. Professionally, we have dealt with them. And we are, we, we are aware that everything was OK. At least there wasn't going to be a problem. I think that what happened took everyone by surprise. Mm. It took everyone by surprise. And it's condemnable, unacceptable. These fan bases of the two artists, yes. many say, look, this has gone beyond fan base. We actually think that this is more of gangsterism. Would you agree? And if you do, what do you think these two artists should do? Because in times past, we see Shatawale produce videos asking his fans to attack radio stations and people who were speaking against him. But before you answer this, I, I have to go to Dan Suman. My colleague Maxwell Agbaba uh, has been following up on the police case. Uh, we understand that two gentlemen spent the night in police custody. Hello, Maxwell. What can you report? Well, Benis, um, as you rightly mentioned, we are here at the Dansuman Police Station. Um, here I can confirm to you um, that Stone Boy is actually here at the Dansuman Police Station. And he is actually sitting in a room directly um, behind me where we have the uh, Morty TV um, decoder. That happens to be the um, crime officer's office here um, at the Dansuman Police Station. Um, we were upstairs some minutes ago. Uh, we saw him together with members of his uh, management team. He's dressed in, um, in a black shirt, black trousers, and then in a white um, shoe. We saw his manager with him. Uh, he's well known as Black CD. He was seated in a sofa in the office um, uh, of the um, crime officer. We also saw some management members um, standing outside on the corridor um, where he is right now. We approached um, one of the uh, team members to speak to them on what they make of Karen's, you know, happenings. Um, but he said he's not going to speak to us. He said the CEO himself has already um, issued a statement apologizing for what happened at the Accra International Conference Center. So he is not uh, going to make any comments for now. And he um, advised us to speak to the police rather because they should be in a position um, to tell us what is happening. We got closer to the um, commander uh, of the um, Dansuman Divisional Headquarters here. He would also not give us any um, information. Um, he only told us to get in touch with the public relations officer of the um, Accra Region Police, um, Ifia Tenge, so she can give us you know, um, the information about what is happening um, currently. He said the incident did not happen in his jurisdiction, so he cannot um, grant any um, interviews right now. But um, as it stands right now, um, what appears to be um, some sort of interrogation is still ongoing um, in that office um, right um, behind me, Benis. Maxwell, do we know where Shatawale is now?
Well, Benes, um, uh, just about two hours ago, um, we were at the Tesano police station. You remember uh, that sometime around 9.45 yesterday, Charles Niyama, popularly known as Shatawale, first posted on social media, Facebook, um, announcing his arrest. Later at 9.54 uh, p.m., he posted again, saying um, that he will be sleeping at a Tesano um, police um, station. He urged his fans um, to actually um, go live on Facebook and then, um, you know, uh, basically um, sing until he is released um, from police custody. That post uh, got 15, 16,000 likes as at our last, you know, check. But yesterday, when we were at the Tesano police station, we asked them today, this morning, we got confirmation from the Tesano police that um, Shatawale is not there at the Tesano police station. But we were told that he was brought to the police station briefly and was later taken to another location. Um, later, uh, we checked on the Facebook page of Kwame Asari, or being popular known as A+, Plus, and he um, stated in that post that they are at an unknown location, but he cannot put out the particular police station where they are because they do not want their fans um, to come uh, to that place or to troop to that particular police station. So he's not going to name the location where they are. All so right. we can confirm that, yes, um, Charles Niyama Mensah, popularly known as Shatawale, is not at the Tesano police station. Right. Thank you very much, Maxwell Agbaba, uh, coming to us from... Uh, uh, Dansaman Police Station. Uh, the details there he just shared with us. But let me come to you, One Love. Uh, One Love is still on Skype, and uh, we are talking about music rivalry and how we can use it to near to the benefit of the industry. One Love. Yes. You have. We have seen in in many countries, for example, especially in the hip hop genre, where rivalry has led to the death of some musicians. Okay, what mm -hmm. we are seeing here for some, they think it's not no longer an issue of fan base. It's now gangsterism. Do you agree with that? And how can we deal with this issue and uh, create something positive out of it? Uh, well, there's, you can't create something positive out of violence. Um, not out of violence. Not out of violence. I'm talking about a healthy rivalry. You know, the competition between the, the musicians. Yeah, they need self-control, they need to know their limits, you know, but we haven't mastered ourselves as youth to know our limits, to have the right people guiding us into what, you know, what is acceptable and not. And if we look at NDC, MPP, they don't really set good examples for us anyway. So, I don't know, I really think what needs to be done in this individual situation is Shatter and Stone Boy need to come together. They need to hang out alone, just the two of them, for a day, two days, three days, just talking in some room or in some place, you know. Or maybe the two of them can go and find the kidnapped girls together with their, their team because the police is not doing it. But they need to get together and find a different way of using their rivalry. Like right now, maybe we can follow them more if they are in a friendship than a rivalry because mm. our political parties are doing the same thing they are doing. All right. Uh, permit me to ask you this because you have worldwide following. Uh, the FOK and boys, you're, you know, you're appreciated uh, in, in a lot of places. How do you think artists mm. should use their influence over their fan base how do you use it in a positive way? All the people who love you and will listen to you if you tell them, do this or do that. I, I mean, I don't think the guys use their... I don't think Shout Out Stoneboy are using their fan base in any negative way. I just think that it's because of the nature of the kind of music they do. It involves a lot of violent energy. If you look at the history of or what is going on in places where dance or music comes from, you know that because of the history of Jamaica, violence is kind of part of the culture, you know, because of yeah, their past. And so when you adopt that kind of music, it comes with the culture, you know, just like when you go into then it, but there's different types. There's reggae music, which is peaceful. There's dancehall music, which is for fun. But there's also dancehall music, which is talking about gangster behavior, you know. And so 
it, it's I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's they have to work on themselves, and then what it reflects in the energy of the fans around them. But mm. they have to work on making more positive putting out more positive images or music or I don't know really but all right thank you very much for your time one love we really appreciate uh, it that you could join the show he joined us from Paris one of the cupola there's a member of the FOK and boys so let me come to you uh, mr. Dupoku gangsterism finally tell us what you make of it how do we deal with this issue of you know what people think is taking advantage of fans to do you know violent things I don't think that gangsterism has a place in our industry. I think that the players in the industry, um, um, following what happened um, um, at the VGMAs, have stated clearly from various groups, have seen statements, and we have proven as an industry that we will not condone or promote any such acts. I think that as, as the security agencies do their work, we ask that they do it to the latter. And as an industry, I believe we have to bring our force to bear on these artists, send a strong message so that no other artist today or in the future does anything like this. When you say, you know, bring our force to bear, what exactly are you looking at? As, as an industry... Boycotts of their music, like you've seen the, the R. Kelly movement. The, the, what exactly do you mean? I'm the the to... industry, I, I do not think that it's a decision I can sit here and make. I certainly can have suggestions, but I think that VGMAs, Musica, the media, everyone, every stakeholder in the music industry must 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 do something. We we cannot allow this to continue. This is condemnable. This is... It's, it's a shame to this country, mm. and we should not allow this to stand. Let me give you the final word, uh, Madam Theresa Ayoade. She's CEO of Charter House. What's the future now? When are we going to know who the artist of the year yeah. is, and most popular song is, and the future for the VGMAs? Of course. I mean, I mean, we've been. This is a long journey. I mean, twenty years is no mean feat. So definitely, um, we the, the future is bright. I mean, this is an entire industry we are talking about. So it's not just about two personalities. Two personalities cannot be the downfall of an industry, definitely not. Um, the industry existed way before they joined it and will continue to exist. Mm. And um, we have a lot of new young talent coming up and this cannot affect their progression as well. So the industry is going to continue to thrive. The VGMS is going to continue to thrive. We're going to move on to higher levels. And um, I believe that these two artists will um, find a way to make peace and we will do our best to facilitate the process. And um, I'm sure very soon this will all be water under the bridge and we'll move on to the When are we heights. knowing who the artists and the most popular song that they um, we are, we, 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 we are We are now doing the event that we will do it at, um, a, later do at, a, at a later date, a press briefing which we hold during the week. We just, we just didn't need to do that because we didn't want to stir up any more issues after the police had gone to so much effort mm. to calm the place down mm. and get the events rolling. We did not want to cause any further step. So we just jumped right to the art of the decade, mm. which was Sarkodie. Mm. And we should actually not dwell so much on, the on all this negativity mm. because so many artists performed and did great, I mean, won awards. Mm. Come on, let's not hinge yeah. this whole event on mm. just these two artists. Mm. I think mm. it's really disrespectful to the other artists mm. to make it seem like the industry starts and ends with just these two. Mm. An issue has occurred. There was a security breach. The, the authorities are handling it. Let's lead them to do that, their work. And let's look at the other aspects of the event that we can also celebrate. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank Talking you. about the positive, Sam says, Samini did so great the night. He was able to restore yeah. uh, the, the, the program. Mm -hmm, and yeah. he was quite disappointed he didn't win Artists of the Decade. Uh, better <laughs> luck next time to Samini and all his fans. But hey, that has been our conversation. Uh, there's more. Something that uh, the president or the Council of State should call these two men. So we'll be following up on this case and let you know. This is News Desk. When we return, Ghana dealing with terrorist threats. Do stay for details.